Hello, welcome back to Let's Play Shadowrun Hong Kong, where we got in a fight with the with a amateur vampire and her minions. Who none of them were vampires because she doesn't want to infect anybody. And to put it to you plainly, she nearly wrecked us. <laughs> We were having no luck with her until near the end, and I sort of, uh, what it is is, I know what it is, I stripped some armor off of her, I, I think. <sighs> anyway, she is connected to Neville Ma in some way. So, I wandered into his room and I recognized Neville Ma. I'd seen him on the news, seen photos of the accident, he was in really bad shape. A lot of broken bones and internal injuries, but somehow he was still conscious. What then? Well, I knew that if I gave uninfected people my blood, they'd be able to heal like I did, just not as fast. I figured that out early and by mistake, but it can come in handy from time to time. So when I saw that Neville was conscious, I decided to make my grand appearance. I materialized in the room and told him I'd make him a trade. I'd fix him up good as new, but he'd owe me some favors for it. I wasn't specific as to how many favors or what kind. He agreed. Actually, he left the chance to become my pawn. I guess that when you're all broken up like that, you'll do just about anything to get better. The deal was done and we got along. I think he's charming. He thinks I'm funny. He doesn't care that I'm a vampire. He told me that he gives me nice things because he likes me and not because he owes me his life. It's all very sweet. What's it like to be a vampire? Not the same as being a person. H Human, metahuman, vampire virus is like any other disease, except instead of coughing, I can't go out during the day. It's not all bad, though. I can turn into mist, and I'm a lot stronger than I used to be. I still have to wash my hair and pay for parking. You know what I miss the most? Steamed buns. I can't eat or drink anything except blood. And I loved street food before I got infected. Sometimes I'll walk by food carts just to smell the things they're frying up, but if I buy something ten minutes later, it's all coming up back up in a mess. Is there a cure? I wish, but no. The only cure is being tossed in a bonfire or having your head cut off, and almost every nation in the world will pay a bounty for a dead vampire. It's not like I had much of a choice, you know. Be a vampire or get killed for some quick cash. It's a pretty raw deal for me either way. I've decided what's going to happen. Okay. <sighs> She exhales heavily. What's it going to be? You're going to live up to your potential. I'm going to help you. You are. We are. Uh, me and Duncan, we grew up on the streets. We can teach you much about how to be a monster. We can't teach you much about how to be a monster, but we can te tell you what not to do. I know how to adjust to a violent new life. I've been living that reality. <laughs> no. Here we go. Yeah, we could, but why would we? Because in Hong Kong, connections are power, and I want the Vampire Queen of Repulse Bay to owe me a favor. <laughs> oh, no reason. I guess the idea of a vampire accountant just tickles me. Oh, I've decided I like you, and I can think of worse friends to have at my side than a vampire. Brilliant smile breaks out her face. Well, in that case, I accept gratefully. What about Dr. Xin Yang? What are we supposed to tell him? He wants Penelope Wong. What do you say, Ku Feng? You think you can get Neville to let her go? In a heartbeat. Neville can't say no to me. He'll do it, no question. In that case, it's settled. He'll be in, he'll be in touch. She, it's settled then. May this be the beginning of a long and fruitful relationship, she bows, smiling. Okay, so we have a um, a vampire friend. It's like, yeah, I, I like her. I don't want to hurt her. Any more than we had to. She totally wrecked us. <laughs> I think we got out of that out of, out of that through the fact that I was lucky enough to have things. We're gonna spend a fortune on medical supplies after this. Take the elevator to the mezzanine floor, I think. Wait, it says the penthouse floor. Is there more we can look at here? I 
And thank you, Gobbit, for mentioning the name of the person we're working for. Kufang is adorable. An adorable monster who almost wrecked us, but she's adorable. Um, and we have a ghoul in our party. Not here particularly, but we do. Let's go down to the mezzanine floor. Good evening, man. Oh, what do you need this time? All right, ma'am. Enjoy your day. See who's out here. I'm fairly certain feeding somebody your blood in Shadowrun doesn't actually make them uh, heal faster like your ghoul in the, in the, what do you call it, um, Vampire the Masquerade. I'm pretty sure all it does is make is infect them with HMVV, HMHVV. Yes, we're going back. Vampires are not necessarily terrible people because they are the same person they were before, sort of. The clink of glasses and sound of Neville Ma's party fades in the distance as you leave Repulse Bay. As the MTR carries you toward Heioi, the mountains of Hong Kong Island roll by as looming masses, obscured by rain and storm clouds. Penelope Wong was fired from Promises of Moonlight, and Ma will be at a serious disadvantage without her. The whims of Trid viewers shift as readily as the tide, and without the Starlet's presence, Promises of Moonlight will undoubtedly lose ratings. What's more, you've managed to turn a powerful foe into a potential ally. Only time will tell how King Q Fang will replay you, however. We're not bringing her into combat. I mean, she's a vampire. She survived on sheer vampireness. She's not a good for a shadow run. She would make a mistake that would get herself and other people killed. I mean, she pretty much did in this case. Uh... And somebody in one of my discords is having troubles in XCOM Enemy Within. Okay. Oh, load bar is filled. Four karma. That wasn't much karma. We got a total of six out of that. Comic Church, kindly chank. Hello, Auntie. Hello, my darling. There's a thrill in her voice that you haven't heard before. Come see me at once. I wanted. I have something I want to show you. Your crew is already here. I'll be right there. I'll be right there right away. Very good, my sweet. Very good. I'll see you shortly. That was interesting. See what Kindly Chang wants. Oh, no, I think we need to still go down. Yep. Yep, it's a new map again. See, it doesn't quite go all the way black. The Fog of War does conceal on any new map. In fact, they use the same... I've mentioned this before. That's the way Shadowrun does this. It uses the same graphics, but it's an entirely new map. From a from a uh, standpoint, there's Doctor Shin Yang. We'll talk to him in a little bit. As you walk through the Mahjong Parlor, you see your crew waiting for you. Clearly uncomfortable to be so close to the Triad boss. Then you see why. Kindly Chang Chang's cheeks are flushed and glowing. She's already hit the bottle pretty far, pretty hard. Ah, Noel, you are here. Where's your drone? Don't see it. Excellent. Yes, Noel, it is good to see you. Oh, there you are, Ractor. You're smoking. They both have expressions that say they'd rather be anywhere else. Nice to see you all. Shall we grab a table for some maj? 
Mahjong, Mahjong. Shut up, Noelle. I have important news. Kylie Chang takes out her PDA and gently places it on the table in front of her. The wiretap we placed in the police force has borne fruit. Wow, that's audacious. Her mouth breaks into a wolfish grin. Her eyes take on a feral gleam. She appears fueled by alcohol and vengeance, a hungry beast on a hunt. My people have delivered a snippet of a recorded video call between the plastic-faced man and Chief Inspector Crate of the Special Deputies Unit. Whoa, this should be good. Should we take a seat? Unfortunately, it's, so, it's only a snippet. There were some technical difficulties with the tap. She glances at Bao, who nods back at her. The person responsible has been sacked. Cheng reaches out a lacquered fingernail. It hunts for the button she's looking for and stabs it in victory. There's a loud, crackling noise at the beginning of the recording, followed by a squelching squeal that makes Gobbit cover her ears in pain. Probably half the other pe half the other people in the parlor. When the video begins record recording begins, the man's voice sounds far away as if he's talking through a thick pane of glass. The woman's is louder, closer. Say that again. There's something wrong with this line. <clears throat> I said... My client isn't interested in hearing more excuses, Inspector. That's what I thought you said. I'm not making excuses, mister. I have a department to run. Not for much longer. If these two Westerners aren't found, they're linked to this Raymond Black somehow. My client wants them out of circulation immediately. The two runners are his accomplices, too. The little orc and the dwarf at the cyberdeck. Gobble looks at Isabel wide-eyed and swallows hard. Isabel winks back reassuring. I'm aware, Inspector, thank you. We don't know how much any of them know, and my client is adamant that the risk be mitigated immediately. I've already made this the SDU's highest priority. If Josephine wants more resources on it, I'm going to need allocations from elsewhere in the department. That is a problem that can be easily dealt with. My client wants this over. Now! No more excuses, no more fuck-ups, no more cops floating in the river. Kindly Chang smiles at that and pours herself a shot. Tell her we're redoubling our efforts. Very good. Dead or alive, you bring them to me. My client requires my personal verification that the threat has been eliminated. This is a interesting face. Hang on. This line is getting worse. There's sharp crack on the recording ends. Kindly Chang picks up her PDA and puts it away with a smile. She unscrews the cap on her bottle and pours herself a shot with a flourish. Oh, that's the guy we saw in the surveillance footage, the one who killed Raymond Black. She leans into the PDA. That plastic face looks a lot cooler close up. I think it's kind of pretty. The video doesn't tell us much. I mean, we already know there's an APB on us. All we're sure of now is this man with the plastic face is definitely working for someone else. This Josephine. Is that all we have, Auntie? A first name? It's not just a first name, Gobbit dear. It's the first name. Josephine Sang, she's the one pulling the strings. Kindly downs her shot and slams the glass upside down on the table. The disease-riddled dogfucker. I should have known it was her from the beginning. She drums her fingers on the table in front of her. And she had the nerve to call down the heat on my runners on Nightjar. Oh, that scabrous fossil is going to pay. So, friend of yours... Chang makes a wet hacking noise in the back of her throat and spits on the floor. She's the CEO of Sang Mechanical Services and a member of the Hong Kong Executive Council. Her face turns to a mask of disgust. It's Josephine Dogfucking Sang. What? Okay. What do you know about her? She's She was the Hong Kong philanthropist. Philanthropists of the Year in 2054 and 2055. Children's hospitals, homeless shelters, food distribution, distribution centers, good causes, and the kinds that get good PR because people are too lazy or myopic to look for the real people doing the hard work. Face to face with the poor work. Don't be so cynical, Isabel. Auntie Chang smiles at her sweetly. Coming face to face with the unsanitized for video poor, for unsanitized for video poor is distasteful, dear. You know that. Her face gets stony. Beyond being a CEO and a philanthropist, I also know Josephine Sang is a lying, conniving bitch. Sounds like you two have history together. Whatever gave you that impression, my sweet. Her wolfish smile returns. Yes, my darling, I don't like jo Josephine Zang. Sang. And I'm going to fuck her up. I'm going to fuck her up bad. Care to elaborate on that? Uh, oh, this should be good. 
It will be delicious, and I may explain why someday, but not today. She picks up her bottle of swill. It's turpentine fumes drift your way. But when I finally get her, you'll be there, my darling. I'll make it a party. What is saying mechanical surfaces? Josephine's baby. It was a B-rated corporation before she married into the Sang family, but after she fought for and won the contract to rebuild Kowloon Walled City, their fortunes rose high. They began to rise in power that right, a ban they began to rise to power that eventually landed Josephine on the Executive Council. Ah oh, sweet. There's a connection between Josephine Sang and the Walled City. Yes, the same place Raymond Black hired my runners to take him. I've already connected the dots. I don't know what it means, but it clearly means something. Hmm. What do you think is her connection between Sang and the plastic-faced man? I don't know yet, but I will. He called her his client. That may be some sort of lead we can follow. Chang nods at Wu. Her glance lingers at his biceps a moment before continuing. Right. Now, all we know is that her he is her instrument, the one who killed Raymond Black. Raymond's not dead. Yes, you may have mentioned that before, Guncho. She smiles at him reprovingly. Besides, the plastic face man is still our best lead for figuring out what's going on. And remind me who the executive council is again. May I, Auntie? Isabel breaks in, giving kindly Chang a chance to calm down a bit. Hong Kong is run by a consortium of powerful corporations called the Board of Governors, who set up the executive council, an eight-member committee of exemplary Hong Kong citizens to represent the people and run the city on their behalf. But of course, you don't vote for them. That would be too unpredictable. Instead, every two years, two executive council slots come up for election, and the corporations on the Board of Governors put up some possible candidates and vote among themselves in a closed-door session. Closed door? I'm shocked. Of course, every single one of these candidates is on some corporation's payroll somehow. Wham, bam, instant government. Let's cut to, our, to the chase. Our next step... There's nothing we can do to touch Josephine Sang, as much as I hate to admit it, but the plastic face man is a different story. He's a third party operative who's been careless and he'll live to regret it. Her eye, little black eyes turn stony for a while. If Sang thinks she can take out two of my runners and get away with it, I'm going to have to explain things to her. She pulls out a thin black cigar and runs it beneath her nose. We're going to find the plastic faced man. And we are going to hurt him. We'll hurt him until we know everything he does. And then we will use that to strike back at Josephine saying. She lights her cigar and takes a deep, deep pull. You will have your vengeance and I will have my own satisfaction. Now get out. I have work to do. She turns away and picks up the bottle. Okay. They're all going to go. I'm going to talk to Dr. Shin Yang. Shin Yang is busily puffing away on a foul-smelling cigar. His calm link in one hand, his eyes flash with anticipatory glee as he sees you. Dr. Shin Yang greets you in the name of all producers. How did the syndic go? Ah, I've got the information you wanted. You explain the night's events from start to finish. As you speak, Shin Yang's face grows ever more incredulous until finally his mouth is left hanging halfway open. He slowly places the cigar in a nearby ashtray and shakes his head in disbelief. Vampires in the Trident industry. A vampire queen, no less. What a nightmare. At least you got me, Wong. And poor Neville's show is dead. That's something. All right, kid. I'll send you a payment to your Matrix drop. You earned it. I wanted you to give me the option not to bring Kufang into this computer game. I really didn't want to report Kufang. I just was going to say he got some magical aid, but... Eh. I'll be glad to help. I'm glad to be able to help. Side note, I had a character get infected with an, a variation of HMHVV once. It was a version made by the GM, and it came with the powers, but not much in the way of the weaknesses. I never developed the savageness, and I never developed the um, desire to eat people. Um, because it was, uh, I don't know what the reasoning was entirely, um, but, uh, it was, there was some sort of super soldier thing where they were researching the HMH VV, trying to make a version that was stable, that could turn people into super soldiers. And we got hired to shut down the lab. This is all things that we discovered, that we came to conclude later. 
And during the fight shut down the lab, my character got shoved in a batch of flowers that were carrying the virus. And so she get, she picked it up. And she started getting a little bit furrier because she was a, um, I think the term is changeling in Shadowrun. She was a fox woman. And she was getting more foxish. And eventually, it that that whole thing caused the end of the cam end of campaign, and not because of player being too powerful. I was still not the most effective fighter. I could survive better. I was a mystical adept, um, so I had some limited adept abilities and some limited spells. It's one of the options that people think is overpowered, but really isn't. Not when we had I was in the same team as a. Uh, as a street samurai that could shoot down gunship helicopters with her bow. Yeah, the the whole the whole vampire with none of the problems thing kind of paled compared to what all my 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 uh, comrades could do. But we ended up having to get out of the city because I picked up and used a gun that did DNA trace and suddenly my DNA my altered DNA was broadcast to several people and I was targeted for study and that was the end of the campaign uh, anyway Dr. Shin Yang is about to speak but his calm link begins to buzz irritated he answers and switches to speaker mode yeah who is it what do you want hello Shin Yang I just wanted to let you know that I've released Penelope Wong from her contract if you're still interested in her she's all yours also I hope you your business is doing alright I'd heard you had some problems with cash flow if you need a loan I'd be happy to help Dr. Shin Yang eyes the image of a devil ma with deep suspicion. You don't sound too mad, Nev. What's the catch here anyway? You must have the next big thing lined up already. Oh, Doctor, there's no need for it. Do you want to know why I keep winning our little contests and you're always playing catch-up? It's because you think people like Miss Wong actually matter. They don't. Stars are crafted, molded out of talent, yes, but ultimately constructed. With enough time and effort, anyone can be made into a star. It's just a matter of manipulating public perception. Maybe so, but I got her now and your show's dead in the water without the star. What do you think of that, eh? I think that I'm going to do what any good soap opera producer would do. Write her character out with a tragic death and bring on someone new. You labor on the misapprehension that viewers have loyalty. They don't. They have only appetite. As long as you chase stars like Wong, you will lose. Don't be afraid to think bigger, Doctor. Reach for the drama, not the dramatists. With that, Neville Ma hangs up on Dr. Shin Yang. The next 30 seconds, Dr. Shin Yang releases a stream of violently imaginative invectives at his phone. Even Strangler Bao looks taken aback at the ferocity of Shin Yang's anger and the inventiveness of the sexual positions that he describes. Finally, he takes a deep breath and composes himself. That dirty little weasel, insulting my creativity like that. That, the nerve. Go on, kid. We're done here. Thanks for all your help, but I gotta get going. I gotta talk to a guy about buying a bunch of snakes. Okay. You hurt Kufang, I'm going to hurt you. Don't hurt Kufang. Kufang's nice people. Don't hurt Kufang. Okay. So now it is going to be karma. I'm going to spin the karma and go to a new video, I think. Um, I think I'll do another set of I could do talking to people again I'm going to go collect stuff I'm definitely going to go do a, another couple of videos I think I'll do the post run maintenance now so the next time I do a, a set I can get right into doing the action excuse me but we'll do some karma spins now okay I could up this. Hmm, plus one additional essence. Plus two armor pierce with all cyber weapons. And strength, I could up my, it would give me overwatch. Increasing the skill and lots of additional weapons. Da, 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 da. Scoring quickly when using melee weapons. 
punches and kicks. So I don't really need melee weapons or unarmed, I use cyber weapons. I could increase this. Probably wouldn't be a terrible idea. It's for throwing weapons, throwing blades. Quickness, I could increase quickness too. Three and three on range combat. I don't use the pistol all that much. But I could increase the dodge. You know what I could do is increase intelligence and biotech. So the enemy hit points is visible. Yes, please, actually. That's a fairly worthwhile spending. Okay. It has nothing at all to do with that thing earlier where I, uh, you know, had the issue with uh, the, the option I couldn't take. So we have one comma left. Anyway, on to the next video where we're going to be talking, we're going to be looking at Shadowland, getting money for our job, and doing between run maintenance with, the, with everybody else. We have four more missions to run. See you in the next video.